the most surprising facts about BMW you didn't know. A car manufacturer with the most renowned name, a brand that succeeded in winning the hearts of many car enthusiasts, a company that produces modern, powerful, graceful, and audacious cars worldwide, BMW. The BMW brand didn't get its start and success all at once. It had its ups and downs, collapse, and incredible growth. It has been through many things, giving us grounds to say that the company's history is truly remarkable and unique. Today, we are going to reveal why the company initially had no plans to produce cars at all, what the BMW creator had in common with the man who invented the internal combustion engine, why BMW is strongly linked to aviation, the company's secret collaboration with the Soviet Union, and how its main competitor, Mercedes-Benz, almost took over the BMW brand. You're on the Big Brands channel, and this is the unique story of the BMW brand. In the northern suburbs of Munich, Karl Rapp and Gustav Otto, son of the internal combustion engine inventor Nicholas August Otto, set up two small aircraft engine companies. The outbreak of the First World War instantly resulted in numerous commissions for airplane engines. Rapp and Otto decided to merge into one aircraft engine plant. As a result, an aircraft engine plant appeared in Munich, which in July 1917 was registered under the name of BMW abbreviation for Bayerisch Motorin Werk, which can be translated into English as Bavarian Motor Factory. This date is considered the year of the BMW Foundation, with Karl Rapp and Gustav Otto as its founders. Max Fritz, who worked at the Daimler plant, was invited to the position of BMW Chief Designer. Under Fritz's leadership, the BMW 3A aircraft engine was produced and successfully tested on the test bench. At the end of the year, the airplane, equipped with this engine, set a world record with an altitude of 9,760 meters. That was also the time when the BMW emblem appeared, a circle divided into two blue and two white sectors, representing a visualization of a propeller spinning against the sky. When designing the logo, the colors also were chosen for a reason. The thing is that blue and white are the national colors of Bavaria. After World War I, the company faced the verge of collapse since the Treaty of Versailles forbade the Germans to produce engines for airplanes, while the engines were the only BMW products then. Nevertheless, the enterprising Karl Rapp and Gustav Otto found a way out of the situation, and the plant switched to producing motorcycle engines first, and then motorcycles. In 1923, the first R32 motorcycle came out of the BMW factory. At the Paris Motorcycle Show, this first BMW motorcycle immediately won a reputation for speed and reliability, as evidenced by the absolute speed records in international motorcycle races of the 1920s and 1930s. Soon, BMW's history was marked by two influential businessmen, Gothair and Shapiro, who took over the company, facing the abyss of debts and financial losses. The key reason for the crisis was the poor development of its own automobile production, accompanied by aircraft engine production. Since the latter provided the bulk of the income for the company's survival and development, BMW ended up in a bad situation. The way out was suggested by Shapiro, who had a close relationship with the British automobile manufacturer Herbert Austin, so that he could make a deal with him to start mass production of the Austins in Eisenbach. The production of these cars reached an assembly line, which only Daimler-Benz could boast of by that time, except BMW. By 1928, more than 15,000 Austins had been produced, which played a crucial role in BMW's revival. Shapiro got curious about the possibility of producing cars of its own design, thus starting negotiations with the famous designer and constructor Wannabald Kamm. Finally, an agreement was reached, and another gifted man joined the development of the well-known automobile brand. Com was engaged in developing new components and assemblies for BMW for several years. In the meantime, a positive decision was made for BMW to approve the company's trademark. The company acquired the car plants in Eisenach with the license to produce small-capacity Austin cars. During hard economic times, the small-capacity car became the most popular vehicle in Europe. On April 1, 1932, the first authentic BMW debuted, gaining recognition in the automotive press and becoming the starting point to produce a car of its own design. 
The car, featuring a well-designed third-party body, was a combination of new ideas and developments with those already proven and used in the Austin models. The engine had 20 horsepower, which was quite enough to drive at 80 kilometers per hour. The four-speed gearbox was a very successful development, which had not been offered on any other model until 1934. By the beginning of World War II, BMW was one of the most dynamically developing companies in the world, producing vehicles adapted for sports. It holds several world records. Wolfgang von Granau crossed the North Atlantic from east to west in a Dornier Vol open seaplane powered by a BMW engine. Ernst Henn on the R12 motorcycle set the world speed record for motorcycles, 279.5 kilometers per hour, unbeaten for the next 14 years. Production is boosted by a secret agreement with the Soviets to supply them with the latest aircraft engines. Most of the Soviet record flights of the 1930s were made in planes equipped with BMW engines. In 1933, the first BMW with a six-cylinder engine was launched at the Berlin Motor Show. It was a real sensation. This 1.2-liter six-cylinder model allowed the car to reach a speed of 90 kilometers per hour, becoming the backbone of many subsequent BMW sports projects. The BMW 303 was well adapted to the actively built Autobahns in Germany then. Right after its introduction, it was driven all over the country, showing only a good reputation in that campaign. People were ready to pay the manufacturer's price for this car, and wealthy BMW fans chose the 303 model with the sporty two-seat Roadster body. In two years of BMW 303 production, the company sold 2,300 copies. Then, BMW 319 and BMW 329 were produced, classified more as sports cars. The top speed of the former was 130 kilometers per hour. Just like all its predecessors, the 326 model, which appeared at the Berlin Motor Show in 1936, looked simply gorgeous. This four-door car came far from the world of sports, and its rounded design was already a trend that appeared in the 50s. Open top, good quality, chic interior, and a lot of new changes and additions ranked the 326 model among the Mercedes-Benz cars, whose owners were extremely wealthy people. Weighing 1,125 kilograms, the BMW 326 had a maximum speed of 115 kilometers per hour and consumed 12.5 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers. Thanks to these features and its appearance, the car was included in the list of the best company models and was produced until 1941 when the production volume of BMW was almost 16,000 pieces. Despite such a number of produced and sold cars, the BMW 326 became the best pre-war model. In 1936, BMW launched the famous 328, one of the most successful sports cars. Its appearance finally formed the BMW ideology, which to this day defines the concept of new models, a car for the driver. Meanwhile, the main competitor, Mercedes-Benz, follows the principle of a car for passengers. Since then, each company has gone its own way, proving that their choices are the right ones. The outbreak of war led to a suspension of automobile production, so the priority was once again given to aircraft engines. In 1944, BMW became the first company in the world to produce a jet engine while testing rocket engines too. The end of World War II was a disaster for the company since the four factories in the eastern zone of occupation were destroyed and dismantled. Some of the equipment was exported to Russia, and the remaining pieces were used to produce the BMW 321 and BMW 340 models, which were also sent to the USSR. Only two factories in Munich remained more or less usable, where the BMW shareholders concentrated their main efforts. The company was struggling, but in 1951, it presented a prototype of the future BMW 501 car, which featured a large four-dimensional sedan body, drum brakes, and a 65-horsepower motor. The novelty was welcomed ambiguously, both with interest and surprise. The latter feeling most likely was caused by the fact that the company, even financially, could not provide mass production of the 501 model, and therefore, in 1952, only 49 cars were assembled. The most remarkable thing is the idea that was maturing in the minds of BMW's designers at the time. They conceived the idea of a luxury model, in 1955, the R50 and R51 were launched, marking the beginning of a new generation of motorcycles with fully sprung chassis. The Isetta, a strange symbiosis of motorcycle and car, was released. The three-wheeled car with a door that opens forward was a huge success in impoverished post-war Germany. 
Along with the little Zeta, BMW introduced two luxury coupes, the 503 and 507, based on the 5th Series sedan. Both cars were sporty, although they had quite an unusual appearance. For example, the maximum speed of the 507 varied between 190 and 210 kilometers per hour, and such a result was achieved thanks to the 3.2-liter engine. However, the company was on the verge of collapse due to the subsequent craze for large limousines and the associated losses. That was the only case in BMW's history when the economic situation was poorly estimated and the cars released to the market had no demand. The models belonging to the 5 Series did not improve BMW's condition in the 50s. On the contrary, the company's debts skyrocketed while the sales declined. To remedy this situation, the bank, one of the largest shareholders of Daimler-Benz, offered to set up production of a small and not very expensive Mercedes-Benz car at the factories in Munich, thereby threatening the existence of BMW as an independent company, producing the original cars with its own name and brand name. This proposal was actively opposed by BMW's small shareholders and dealerships all over Germany. Their joint efforts raised the amount of money required to develop and start production of a new BMW mid-range model, which was expected to improve the company's position in the 1960s significantly. Once the capital structure had been restructured, BMW managed to continue its activities. For the third time, the company started all over again. The middle-class car was supposed to become a family car for average Germans. It was almost impossible to simultaneously introduce the car into production in 1961 and introduce it at the Frankfurt Motor Show. So, the sales department urged the company to urgently prepare several prototypes for the exhibition to attract future customers. The bet was made and proved to be worthwhile in many respects. During the exhibition run and in the following weeks, about 20,000 orders were placed for the BMW 1500. Imagine the situation the company found itself in with only 2,000 cars produced in 1962. In total, the production of BMW 1500 models for the entire period of its existence on the assembly line amounted to 23,000 copies. That marked the rise to the top of the automobile industry. New factories were opened, the world's first mass-produced turbo model 2002 was produced, and an anti-lock braking mechanism was invented a system that all leading automakers now equip their cars with. In 1972, the BMW 3.0 CSL appeared, a unique car able to accelerate to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.4 seconds. In addition, the weight of the car was very light, thanks to the usage of aluminum for doors, trunk, and hood. The BMW car became lighter and faster, which caught the eye of many car enthusiasts, prompting them to buy a car of this brand. The 1980s and 1990s, the legendary era of the automobile industry, followed in its wake. In those years, there was terrible competition among different car companies. The BMW executives allowed their engineers complete freedom, and the first versions of the brand's most legendary models appeared. The famous BMW Alpina B7 Turbo, the BMW 3, 5, 6, and 7 series. BMW's history is also intriguing regarding the takeover of different brands. When the company showed good growth, the brand's top management started considering becoming the main car manufacturer in the world, squeezing out all the competitors of BMW. To achieve that goal, the company adopted several strategies, produce high-quality cars that will consistently meet customer demand, minimize costs, affecting short-term increases in profits, but potentially leading to serious losses in the quality of BMW-branded products expand by taking over competitive brands or companies that can contribute to the company's growth. BMW started using all three methods, including takeovers. One of the absorbed companies was Mini. It is a legendary car brand engaged in producing small cars. The brand entered the industry from England, successfully gaining a foothold in the market. BMW saw the brand's great potential, so it decided to take it over completely. In 2001, Mini, under BMW's patronage, launched the Mini model, which became extremely popular worldwide. Already by 2014, the company's lineup included nine basic competing models. But in 2015, the brand decided to reduce the number of produced models to five to give them all the focus. In 1998, BMW decided to buy Rolls-Royce Motors. The brand was already supplying Rolls-Royce with its engines and basic components to produce premium cars. 
But at the same time, Volkswagen offered a much higher price for the Rolls-Royce brand, and BMW failed to make a deal. Subsequently, Volkswagen could not quickly swap all the necessary components for its own, so it had to negotiate with BMW. As a result, BMW became the outright owner of Rolls-Royce and turned it into its subsidiary. That was a new milestone in BMW's history. Today, many of Rolls-Royce's components are made by BMW, which allows BMW to experiment with cars, producing high-quality BMW cars for the end consumer. BMW's history took quite an interesting twist when the company decided to enter the premium market. It started to produce expensive and powerful cars at a cost that was far from the average car owner's salaries, even from those who are loyal BMW fans and have followed the history of the company since the brand's inception. Among BMW premium cars, we can highlight the Rolls-Royce car. Modern models of this brand rank among the most expensive in the world. They feature increased comfort while driving on the road. While inside, it is almost impossible to hear what is going on outside, creating ideal conditions even for simple driving in the car. There's also a cutting edge model, the BMW i8, with a futuristic design featuring progressiveness and innovation among customary cars. Naturally, they cost a lot of money, which is why they are part of the premium car segment. BMW's history continues with great success even today. The company produces modern, powerful, graceful, and challenging cars for different target segments. The brand has conquered the hearts of many car enthusiasts worldwide, enjoying enormous popularity in all countries, and stands as one of the best car manufacturers. Look outside your house since there's a good chance there will be at least one BMW car or even a few. The result is obvious. In 2021, BMW reported revenues of $131.6 billion, a 16.39% increase from 2020. Annual gross profit for 2021 was $26 billion, a 67.66% increase from 2020, of which net income was $14.6 billion, a 271.92% increase from 2020. The number of employees at the end of 2021 was 118,909. In 2022, the BMW brand was valued at $49 billion. Today, the brand's history opens new horizons. BMW doesn't ignore the environment while producing new cars. In the 21st century, this issue is highly relevant. So BMW is trying to produce cars that would not be harmful to our planet. For example, the brand actively produces electric cars, generating absolutely no gases and harmful substances into the air, increases the speed of its cars, and constantly experiments in production, trying to ensure the highest quality and provide excellent cars to the clients. BMW is a unique brand with an interesting history. It has had its ups and downs, was on the verge of total collapse, and skyrocketed its sales during peak growth. Try driving a BMW and you'll understand why so many people worldwide love the brand. For the past 30 years, only BMW and Toyota have managed to generate increasing profits year after year. Three times in its history, the BMW empire, while on the verge of collapse, has risen and succeeded each time. Everyone in the world sees the BMW group as a synonym for high standards in automotive comfort, safety, technology, and Bavarian quality. This brings us to the end of this video. We hope you liked the video. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on your way out. This will take only a tenth of a second, but surely pump the YouTube algorithm to bring our videos to the top. See you in the next video.